This episode of McCall's Quilting Quilt Along is brought to you by BetterTex, fabric for quilters by quilters. Hello, and welcome back to the McCall's Quilting Glorietta Quilt Along. I'm having a wonderful time with this quilt, and I hope you are too. And today, we're going to look at our B blocks. The B blocks form a border around that big center A block, and you're going to be making them in two different colorways or two different uh, arrangements of fabrics. And with one of these arrangements, I'm decided that I want to do that background that's all oriented the same way. So I'm going to show you that one first. Okay, I've done my little star. It just it, It's a very simply pieced star, just like um, the star we were seeing earlier, but even less complicated because you don't have a stripe here. And so I already made that little star, and I paid attention to make sure that this was all running the same way. So remember what I said, when you're when you uh, want to do that, you need to make sure you've planned that your, your quarter square triangles, that you're using them in the right orientation. Okay, so I've got that little guy done. But now I need to do these guys. So what I'm going to do, I think the easiest way to do this is to actually put the patches out. Now I've already got one of these sewn on, just to give me a starting point here. You, don't, you, know, you would be doing that later. But what I'm going to do now is I have a whole stack a whole stack of the three and seven eighths inch squares cut in half. And I'm gonna just kind of deal these around, making sure that they're in the right orientation. So if I put one down and it's not the right way, like that one, I'll move it. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. Alrighty. It's a good idea to do all four of them at once. And the reason for that is to make sure you have the right one. Because if you have, if, you know, if someone's going to be on, the, on its side, on the side, you need to know who that is. All right, there we go. And what you can do, you can make all the blocks um, like this. You can make all the centers at once, and then you can deal these out, all of them. So you don't have to just do one block at a time. You can do the whole thing, then you have them ready to go. Okay, so if you do that, what you're going to be doing is you'll pick up one unit at a time. So in other words, this one and this one, like that, okay? If you take that to the machine and you sew that one on and you have that one over there, you can't make a mistake, theoretically. What happens if I have these like this and I reverse them? Oops, now it's going vertically. So, the thing to do is you take one at a time. Okay. Now, these do not have um, match points marked on them. These don't really need to have match points, although if you feel more comfortable with them, by all means. However, the way I'm going to do this, the way to get it in the right place, is to align it at that little narrow corner. You can't align up here. You see that, how that sticks out? It's really hard to get that in the right place. But if you have this in the right place down here, this will end up in the right place also if you cut properly. So I'm going to pin that right now. Okay, just get that aligned. And I'm going to pin it up here too, like that, making sure that that's just the way it should be. Okay. And I'll pin that. And what I'll do is I'm leaving this guy in place like that, and I'll go to another one. Do the same thing, leave one in place, turn that right over where it is, and then, because it's easier for me to handle if the point is away from me, I'll just align this one. Whoops, come here, baby, like that. Remember what I said about <clears throat> the points? You want them aligned at this point, but if, when this goes through the machine, it gets like that, Right there, it doesn't matter because your seam allowance is actually everything outside of about here, okay? But you want to make sure it's aligned properly all the way down the side. So I'm just going to put another pin down here. Now here's something you don't want to do. <clears throat> Notice when I'm moving these, I'm moving them very gently, and I'm moving them this way by putting my finger on top. I'm not taking this and pulling. And that's why, you see how that's the bias. Remember our bias edges? And now, it's the same size. Well, it's a little bit different. So I'm just gonna ease that guy back. 
The fact that I had some starch on this made it easier to get it back to the right size and shape. But I'm moving these very gently because of all the bias. I want you to do that too. Okay, I'm just gonna put him right here. And then I'm gonna do one more, leaving that in place. Like this. Oops. You'll find what's comfortable for you. This works for me. For some reason, I'm right-handed, so I always pin from my right. And I'm just laying it on top there. I'm not. OK, so what I'm going to do now, I'm leaving these individual triangles, these little guys, in place. I'm going to take these over now. I can take them all over at once, once they're pinned, and if these guys are still there. I'm going to take them over to the machine. I'm going to sew them together, and then I'll show you what the next thing is. All righty. OK, here we go. Let's just get that going. I have the needle down function on <clears throat> because I find it easier when you don't want to lose your place. When you're trying to set something with bias, it's just better if it can't pull around if you're trying to work with it a little bit. So I keep that needle down function on. If you have one on your machine, they're really cool. If you don't have one, you're fine. It's just a fun thing. If you have it, it's a nice time to use it. OK, pin out. Now, make sure when you're sewing this seam with the bias, don't pull. You have two bias edges here. I don't want it. You don't want to be pulling them. OK. There we go. Making sure that that lines up right there. OK, and I can chain piece these. Chain piecing is where you just keep sewing the same thing. You don't have to cut the thread in between and pick everything up and you can just keep going. You can do all of them at once. You can do all of the first triangles on this unit at once. Chain piecing is, um, it saves a lot of thread and it's actually a lot faster. Plus, once you get in the groove where you're doing the same thing over and over, if something's not aligned properly, you're gonna notice because all of a sudden something's weird. And you may have noticed, I just sewed over pin. Bad me. It's one of the things I do, and I try so hard not to, but then I get, you know, I'm talking. I'm talking, and then, oh, there goes the pin. Okay. So you can see, this goes pretty quickly. It can go even faster as you get used to it. All right, get that other pin out. Little things right there. Okay. So I've just chained piece three of them. You can see that was pretty quick. I'll cut them apart. Take out the pins I went over. Okay, doke. And now I'm going to take them to the iron. Again, I'm ironing, I'm, when I'm pressing these, I have a dry iron. You can have a tiny bit of steam if you really want it, but if you have this much bias and you're using a steam iron, it's going to be stretching and it's going to be getting all over the place and it won't even it won't stretch uniformly it's going to be a nightmare so dry iron okay all right setting the seam there we go this is a really i really like this little iron okay now usually let me move that out of the way usually you press to the dark side like that but if we press both of these to the dark side when we sew this one on we're going to have six six layers of fabric in that one corner, and then you'll have a bump. So, you know, it's better to have it uh, pressed so you don't have bumps, in my opinion, than to worry about a little show through of dark. Okay, so I'm just pressing that one open. There we go. And I'll press this guy open too. And now this guy. I know I already set that seam, but it's just kind of a habit to move that way. And if you get that habit, then you'll always do it right. You'll always set your seam. OK. There we go. Whoops. OK, so now I'm going to take them back here. And you'll notice that they're going in different directions here, aren't they? OK, it's so easy. You just put them back where they align. OK, these guys are going the same direction. That's good. Now, put this one next to him. Uh, wouldn't that be awful? 
Actually, it wouldn't be awful at all, but it might drive you crazy because you know it's in there. All right, I'll hit that there, and this one here. Okay, so now I know I have everybody back with its partner. Okay, you, as I said, you can do all the blocks at once. And now you're gonna do the second half where you have this guy in place, and you're gonna fold that one over on that one, and this one on this one, like that. Just adding all the poor little guys that got left behind. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin them too. I hope you can see this, by the way. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit random, but I just suddenly get struck by things like fabric. Can you see how this glows? It's actually, it's a really interesting sort of an optical illusion. It just, I think because this is exactly um, a lighter, it's a tint of this color. So it feels like there's light coming through it. Anyway, just a little aside because I noticed it just then. Which reminds me too, if you want to know, this is the, the ribbon floral collection from Benertex. It's really, really just a beautiful collection. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. So I'm gonna pin this guy right over there, like that, okay? This is a, um, a match point I marked. In case you want to, you can do the same thing, just to make sure that it goes through the seam. You really don't have to, but if it's something you wanna do, you would just line that up with the seam when you pin here. That's just, you know, some people are more comfortable doing that, and that's fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. I have my best friend forever, best friend. We met the first day of high school. The woman uses more pins per seam than anybody in the whole entire world. And actually, her quilts are perfect. And, you know, they really are. She, they're perfect to the thread. And I admire that, uh, you know, that she does that, that she gets... Um, pleasure from it, and that's the part I think I admire the most, is that she's found what makes her happy, and she does it. So if it makes you happy to not pin at all, and your quilts are turning out in a way that makes you happy, go for it. You don't have to pin. I find, as I've gotten older, and it's so weird, but as <laughs> the older I get, the, uh, the more I do things like pinning and setting seams, I think some of us have to learn the hard way over years and years and years. But um, it may also just be that because I'm older, I don't see as well as I used to. Heaven forbid. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you chain piecing these other ones. Whoops. Don't wanna slip off my chair. <laughs> A great thud bouncing through the room. All righty. Hello, little machine. I sure wish you were in the room with me. I know it's kind of weird, but if you were in here right now, you could pet my machine, and I could pet my machine, and we could talk about how we're people who do things like that. We pet fabric and love our machines. Because we're part of the same tribe, you and I. Okay. Certain children and husbands in my life do not understand that. Even one of my sisters like, pet fabric? What does that mean? What are you talking about? She's not a quilter. Petting fabric to me is part of the pleasure. It's just, you know, reveling in the designs and the feel and the, just the colors. So I urge you to do in quilting, do what makes you happy. And don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Okay, as long as it's not stuff like leaving your rotary cutter open on the dining room table. That's not a good thing to do. There are some things that are just safety issues. For instance, I strongly recommend that if you're having a retreat with your quilting friends and you have a lovely bottle of wine that you're sharing with dinner and then you have another little lovely bottle of wine while you all are watching a movie, that is not the time to go rotary cut. Okay? I was at a retreat once where that's what happened. People were having a wonderful time and someone decided she'd finish cutting things out and it didn't go well. Now, fortunately, she didn't get hurt, but she didn't cut things properly. <sighs> she had to go buy another whole two yards. And the shapes she cut, you know, I guess she'll probably come up with a use at some point, but you know, I just, I, 
But really, it's important to close the rotary cutter every single time. I, you know, you, if you don't have kids in the house and you're thinking, why do I have to do, why do I have to close a rotary cutter every time? Well, the reason you do is if you put your rotary cutter down on a piece of fabric and you're doing these other things and you pick up the fabric, the rotary cutter can go flying. It can land on your foot with the blade open. Believe it or not, just traveling that small distance from the table to your foot, the rotary cutter will cut you and it'll go in a good eighth of an inch. So just get in the habit. If you get in the habit of closing it every time, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a pain in the patoot at all. All righty. So those have been all chain pieced together. Then I'm just going to cut them apart. OK. Here we go. And I'm going to take them over to the iron and press, press them. If you look at yours, when you get to this point and you have like a little kitty cat sitting there, little kitty cat ears, that's just right. <laughs> I'm teaching the little girl who lives next door to quilt. And she is the one who called them kitty cat ears. She's like, oh, look at that. There's a kitty cat. Yes, there is. OK. So I've pressed. I set the seams. And I'm just going to kind of gently press that open. Remember, you've got bias. I know you've heard that a thousand times. It's easy to forget, though, when you get working on something. And you know, if you're like me, you just really want to see that one thing done. So just, I'm just going to keep going until I finish that one block. And then I get that block done. Well, I just want to see what the next one looks like. And before I know it, it's 2 in the morning. And that's when I forget I'm working with bias and you know, really push something or pull on it. And next thing I know, instead of a unit that's 3 and a half by 6 and a half, I've got a unit that's uh, some kind of a trapezoid. Just think, I'm using the geometry I took in high school. And so are you. If you're a quilter, you're using geometry all the time. And one of my daughters tells me I'm also using algebra, but I'm not sure about that. OK, here we go. OK, so now I'm going to take them back here. And once again, you've got to make sure you have them in the right orientation. OK. And another part to remember is these are star points. You don't want to put it like that. You know, you have this green diamond. Nope. You want to make stars. So you have star points like that. OK. That just doesn't look right, does it? Hmm. I guess I should do a little rearranging. There we go. Oh, yay, look at that. Woohoo. Oh, I love it. I just love it. OK, <laughs> don't mind me. So once you have all of your units made and arranged, you would pick them up one at a time. You know, you could take this to the machine like these. You know, you could just take one or you could take both. And they're certainly not going to get out of alignment. Same with this one and this one, making sure you have them with their middle unit. OK, and the same here. You do the three rows. I'll show you these three rows over here, like this. This is the other colorway, the other arrangement of fabric. There you go, three rows, just like that. Now, I know that we often sew, seems like that, but I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do it again, just so you can see that I think is a good way to do this. OK. Oh, this is perfect. I want to show you something. <clears throat> Do you see how this is pressed? So they're both going out. The center and this side one are going out. And the reason for that is because if it's pressed this way, it's going to be bulkier. But I'm going to rearrange this. And this is something I recommend. If you've pressed pieces and you start to put them together and you realize that instead of butting up, they're going to be going the same direction, I usually change something. Either I, you know, I press both of them open. So you could press this one like that. Just open and same with that one, or press this going the other direction. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to check this one too. Yep, I'm going to press them both going in. There is absolutely no shame in changing your mind about something like pressing. It's, it's absolutely fine. And I would rather decide to do that now than you know, kind of when I'm piecing them all together and now they don't fit together nicely and I wish I'd butted up the seams and, oh, it, there's no, don't feel bad if you have to redo something. 
Don't feel bad if you have to unsew something. In a minute, I'm going to show you my favorite way to unsew. Because heaven knows, I, I, uh, I'm a champion reverse sewer. I'm going to show you my favorite way. It saved a lot of time. I used to do the thing I was taught in uh, seventh grade, where you use a, a um, whatchamadigger, a seam ripper, and you rip every like fifth stitch, on, and then you pull the thing from the back. But I'll show you something faster. OK. So those are good. And I'm just going to press this little thing down again. There's a lot of fabric there. I'm just going to make that tidy. OK. So now I know that they're going to butt up against one another. And I'm going to show you. I'm just going to sew this seam. Now, is that ready to sew? <gasps> no. Why? Because that's not a star point. That's a house roof. OK, there we go. I'm just going to fold it onto itself like that. And I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do is butt up these seams against one another. If you're a new quilter and you don't know about this yet, it's really cool. You can feel it. You can, with your finger, you can just feel right there that they're nested right against each other. And that means that your seams are going to, your, you know, your seams will match up in your block. And I'm going to not do this yet. I'm going to come down here. And I'm just going to bring that one right there. Make sure, yeah, there it is. I can feel it. You can really tell when you get to the right point. And pin there. And right here, oops, in the middle, when I sew this one, I want to sew right through there. It's hard to see because I've got gray thread there. But you'll see that that's where the seams cross from sewing the triangles on. And right there, that's the point of my triangle. So when I sew, you're aiming for that, but I go about a thread over, just so that my point doesn't get caught down in the, in the ditch when I, when I press it. And on this side, you have two places like that. You right there and right here. So when you're sewing, you want to be aware of how far in you are, how aligned they are, and pin accordingly. So. Oh, I'm thinking they're pretty darn close to that quarter inch. In other words, if I took a ruler, if I measured from the raw edge here to that intersection, do I have a quarter of an inch? Yes, I do. And on the other side, quarter of an inch there, yep. Quarter of an inch there, yep. If you have more than or less than a quarter of an inch, just move back and forth to accommodate that. And in other words, I'm trying to show you what that, you know, I realized once I said it wasn't as clear as I'd like it to be. If this was too short, if this wasn't a full quarter of an inch, I would scooch it over like that, and I would measure that quarter inch from the fabric underneath, from the piece under here, until I had a quarter inch between that edge and the point. And then, whoops, once I knew I had a full quarter inch between that back, the other fabric, the one underneath there, and that point, then I would pin it in place. Because then I know that if I'm a quarter inch in, if I'm stitching a quarter inch in from the outermost edge of fabric, I'm going through the point. OK. Oops, didn't scoop. And then the ends, the, you know, you, can, you don't have to pin these if you don't want to, but you're just, you're just uh, lining them up. That's all. No, I'm not going to bother pinning that one. I would just have to pull the pin out. So let's go over here and I'll sew them together. With my little thread, dude. There you go. Zoom. I don't drive nearly as fast as I sew most of the time. All righty, here we go. I lined up those corners. And this guy, oops. Well. Every once in a while, fabric gets rude. Have you noticed? It doesn't cooperate with you anymore. It has its own ideas. OK. Get my pin out. OK, and I'm going to sew right through the point. All righty. This is, believe it or not, this is another thing you can chain piece. Because these blocks are identical, in the, you know, you're going to make a number of them that are all the same. You can chain piece these things as long as you have them pinned first so that you know you're orienting things the proper way. Okey-doke. 
All right, last little bit. Pin out. There we go. Okay. Again, if you wanted to do them all at once, you certainly could. Oops, that didn't leave. Okay. When you do this pressing, the setting of the seam here, you're also making sure that the, the, the uh, previously pressed seams are lying down where you want them to. And then you can decide which way to press this seam. I'm pressing it out because there's far less fabric going that way than there is in the center where that star is. Okay. So there we go. I want you to see something. I'll just move this over here so you can get a good look. Obviously, I could have pressed it better. You would take more time than I did. So if you look here, look at that point right where you want it. And that point, and that point, yay! And look at these seams match up. It's not hard. It doesn't take a lot of time. And it's, um, it's fun to do. It's fun to have things go the way you want them to. And since I have you here, I'm going to share a couple of my most favorite tips, the things that are just kind of weird that make life go round. OK. First of all, when you're putting thread in your machine, most of us have options. You can put it horizontally or vertically on a spool. But did you know that which way you put it determines how much it curls? And I don't just mean vertical or horizontal. Let me show you what I'm talking about. OK, let's move this so you can really see it. OK, I'm holding this vertically, and I'm going to pull it out like that. Whoops. And then I'm going to bring my hand together to see how much it twists. Does that twist? Not much at all. I'll turn it over. It's still vertical, but I've turned it over. Is there a difference? Ha! Yes, there is. Look at that. You put it this way, and you pull, and there's no twist. You put it this way, and there is twist. You want as little twist as possible. So what I do, it's, a, again, a habit. Every time I put thread on the machine, I just try it all these different ways. So this one, OK, I'm going to pull it like this. OK, horizontally, pull that together. There's very little twisting. Turn it this way and pull it. Ooh, look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. It's completely twisted up. They're both horizontal. This way is a problem, and this way is great. I can also try the same one just to see if it does better vertically. I know it's strange, but it really makes a difference. Oh, that's not good. Look at that twisting. Turn it this way and pull vertically with a vertical spin. Look at that. Pretty good, huh? If you aren't checking which way to load your thread when you put it in the machine, what happens is you get a lot of, you know, it gets curlier and curlier and curlier as you sew along. And then you start having problems with thread breaking or your bobbin is uh, having issues, or you just your stitching just doesn't look neat and pretty. And that's what you do. Look at that. That's really good. OK, put it the other way. Aha! So try every thread you put in your machine. Try it four ways. And when you find like that, look at that. I would load that horizontally that way, so that as it feeds toward the needle, it's coming off without curl. OK, that's one of my favorite little tips. And I have one more little tip for you. I am going to sew a really wonky seam, and I'm going to show you my fast way to unsew. Wonky, by the way, is a technical term. OK. So here I go. I'm sewing this, and they should be aligned. And gosh, the cat has just jumped under the ironing board, and I'm not paying attention. And oops, look at that. That is a problem. They're not aligned at all. OK. Here is my favorite way to unsew. I'll put my glasses on. And I'm getting a little rotary cutter. And all I'm going to do, I put my hand on the surface like that, just to sort of hold it there. And I'm pulling with my other hand to expose the thread. And it's like undoing a zipper. Instead of having to do your seam ripper every four or five stitches and then pull the whole thing apart, OK, pulled all that out. And then my seam ripper here has a sort of a rubbery end, rubbery end. I can turn this over, and the seam ripper rubbery end thing just pulls all those little threads out. You don't have to sit there and look at the, it's, it's clean. 
You don't have to sit there and try to get all those little ends out. And any kind of a rubbery um, thing works fine. Don't get an eraser that's going to shed. But OK, completely done, no threats. So that's my fabulous tip for the day. OK, you have homework. You have blocks to make. So you should get busy and start sewing your B blocks in both arrangements. And uh, another thing, oh, I should tell you, if you don't have your kit yet, you can go to mccallsquilting.com slash quiltalong. And hopefully there are still some kits there. I don't know if there are or not. And um, when you're doing your homework, I want you to remember that this is something fun. This is something you're doing for you, OK? Don't let anyone tell you how you should do it. If you want to have music on really loud, go for it. Don't let anybody spoil your good time or tell you that your things aren't, oh, those points aren't good, or oh, that's not flat. If you're having a good time and you're enjoying what you're doing, don't worry about anyone else's criticism, OK? Just have fun. This is something we do for ourselves. So I really am glad you joined me. And the next time we get together, we're going to be making C blocks, which go in the little corner over there with um, that first uh, diagonal border. Alrighty, so I'll see you next time. I hope you have a wonderful time sewing your blocks. This episode of McCall's Quilt and Quilt Along is brought to you by Bettertex, fabric for quilters by quilters.